Hello and welcome. My name is Deepak Mishra and I have brought a new video for you guys to tell you about the knowledge test. What is a knowledge test? It is an equivalence exam through which the medical council in Germany determines that your medical knowledge and your clinical skills are equivalent to that of a German doctor. And after you have proven that your knowledge and skills are equal, then you get a permanent medical license here. That is called Deutsche Approbation. So going further with the slides, we'll, I'll show you. First slide is a pattern. What is the pattern of the exam? So the exam is totally practical oriented. So uh, the first is you will be introduced to a patient. A patient may be inpatient or an OPD patient. And you will have to do a history taking and then a clinical examination. During this entire time, there is going to be an examiner sitting besides you in that room in the corner somewhere and he'll be observing what kind of history you are taking and what clinical examination you are doing. The clinical examination can be diverted from the examiner. The examiner might tell you that uh, to show some particular sign or to uh, how, how will you diagnose appendix, uh, appendicitis. I mean, and I might tell you that, okay, how will you find out, where will you check, how will you check the pulses of the patient, peripheral pulses. So those uh, simple, simple clinical examinations might be uh, required, like he may ask you to, or she may ask you to elicit those signs and those uh, uh, clinical tests. So that is the, uh, and after this exam is over, after history taking is over and also clinical examination is over, you will have to write all that thing in that piece of paper. They will give you a piece of paper and there you have to mention all the things that what you have Alice, like taken history and also the clinical findings. After that, uh, you will be taken to a Viva room. In Viva room, there will be three examiners. So each exam that will be pre-decided. So you will be also informed before the exam, like before two weeks before the exam, you will be knowing who are your examiners and what uh, department they are from. So you can Google them and find about their interests and about their work and everything. And so that you will be prepared that, okay, this person, suppose a person is a visceral sur surgeon, that is a general surgeon, and he's interested in saying, uh, liver liver exam liver uh, surgeries you may see that which department he has worked he's done his uh, thesis and which department he has worked in pre uh, previously and everything everything is on google like you may check the website of that hospital and check the cv of that doctor and so that you'll have an idea that okay if this doctor is there he might ask more about this thing i mean it's not a rule but then it is a likelihood likelihood that um, it may go like that. So once you enter that room, uh, you will they will ask you to present your case. So you will present the case which you have taken, that history, and also you will talk about the clinical findings of that patient. Then uh, these three examiners, most likely, like uh, one will be from either gen general surgery. I mean, it can be anything: a trauma surgeon, or an orthopedic surgeon, or a radiologist, or a general general surgeon general medicine gastroenterologist cardiologist it can be any like combination of those doctors so then they will ask you uh, some questions pertaining to the case which you have taken like about the history like like we have in our final mbbs exam like they will talk to you about okay what what does that sign mean and what is the they'll talk about variations that what if this happens and what if that happens like that so that those things are not very difficult because um, sometimes uh, you may get some time like say half an hour between your practical exam and your viva exam so uh, if you get that time it's not sure that you will get it but if you get the time you can like read something about uh, the case so that you'll be better prepared for that case the duration of this exam is going to be 60 minutes so after this case presentation, say maybe 10-15 minutes of case discussion, uh, there will be theory discussion. And uh, what theory will be covered and what subjects will be covered, that we are going to see in the next slide. In theory, the subjects covered are going to be mainly internal medicine, general surgery. General surgery also includes trauma and orthopedics. So the question will be from trauma and orthopedics as well. Emergency medicine is a hot favorite for everybody. Everybody likes to ask about ask about emergency medicine that like uh, lung emboli, pulmonary embolism, or what will you do when the patient comes with uh, myocardial infarct, or uh, what are you going to be in uh, pulmonary uh, say 
plural effusion what will you do in plural effusion uh, what will you do in stroke so uh, the emergency medicine that is a hot favorite for everybody then the less hot favorites are this radiation protection this it is called is a german german concept it's called strahlenschutz that that means that there are laws in germany uh, about who should get radiation who should not get radiation if there is a child obviously uh, if even if there is a thought of fracture you will think before ordering a x ray not directly order a x ray for every child uh, because uh, there is going to be a cumulative radiation exposure over the period of time for that child in his lifetime so thus uh, those kinds of rules are there so you need to know those rules there are values in millisieverts and in grays that what is a uh, how many millisieverts are in ct and how many millisieverts uh, are in uh, rontgen that is x ray so those kind of uh, values and rules are there that that is a different thing that i had not learned in my indian mbbs exam uh, or my curriculum so that has to be extra studied studied extra over here but that is also not tested very highly so you can relax and uh, like find some small pdf files on internet and read those 10 10 20 pages for them that is a, i'll also provide them like uh, later on if somebody needs to have pdf from them uh, clinical pharmacology is uh, not too great as in uh, not to a greater extent it's a simple thing uh, most of the things are there in the books which I'm going to recommend later on in this video. Uh, you can also, uh, from your residual, the, the, exam, the examination is going to be like the case oriented. When they discuss about theory of what will you do in this, what will you do in that, then they will ask you about, okay, what drug are you going to use? What is the dose of that drug? Or maybe dose is high, high end, they will not do uh, doses. They will not ask you doses, but what is the mechanism of action of this drug or what is the other case where we are going to use it or what is the contraindication, what is the side effect. So those time, time of clinical things, they might ask you about the drugs which are going to be used in those conditions, what we have already discussed in general medicine and general surgery, trauma, emergency. So they are not going to specifically ask you typical drugs which are not part of the discussion. They'll just ask you in the discussion, okay, tell me about, okay, you're going to use, say, uh, nitroglycerin for a heart infarct or the uh, myocardial infarct. So, what is the mechanism of action? How is it going to protect it? Uh, what is the side effect? What dose are you going to use it? How frequently are you going to use it? So, those kind of things, the basic things. Uh, then, they, all, they also uh, might show you diagnostic images, like uh, they may show you uh, x-rays or CT scans, they may tell you to diagnose something, uh, okay, okay, they will show you a CT scan and uh, tell you that oh, of a chest and uh, you will be expected to find out pulmonary embolism in that. Or they will show you MRT, uh, MRI that is called, uh, and uh, they will expect you to show uh, some muscle tear in uh, shoulder. So that that is diagnostic images. I will tell you how to prepare for that later uh, in this video. Next is ECGs and uh, lab interpretation. So ECGs, if uh, somebody comes from internal medicine or even from surgery, a colleague of mine uh, had appeared for the exam and uh, uh, a surgeon has asked him about ECG. So no, anybody can ask you anything. It's not like if there is surgeon, he will not ask you about ECG or he'll not. If there is a medicine guy, he will not ask you about hip fracture. Uh, in my exam, an uh, oncologist asked me about uh, knee uh, flexion extension uh, exam tests and everything. And, and he asked me to show me about the orthopedic tests for knee while he was a general uh, or oncologist. So I did not expect that, but that was a surprise. So the next uh, ECG, you have to be well versed with ECG, at least the basic things like heart, uh, heads infarct, the myocardial infarct, uh, bundle branch block, uh, blockades, uh, AV blocks and uh, atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, tachycardias. So those things you have to be familiar with, not very, uh, not unclear things they won't expect from you. But basic things, basic things they will expect from you. Lab interpretation of if there is a pancytopenia, if there is an infect, uh, what kind of infect do you see from lab? Uh, so those kind of things. If there is a procalcitonin uh, increased, if there is a CRP increased, what is, if CRP is specific or not specific? What what will you say if alkaline phosphatase is increased or SGPT, SGOT is increased? So lab interpretation is very important. Now they test you on that. Going to the next slide. Now the question is, I have talked to you about what is the uh, assumed 
thing that they will test you for. Now, how do you prepare for it? That is the most important part here. How do you prepare? Preparation is duration I have written here as three to four months, but it's not always so. If you are like working very hard and you have working very hard, I mean you're working in a hospital, you have a job and you don't find time to read and you need or you read, study only Saturdays and Sundays, that too not very, uh, very much, then it's going to take you around four, five months, six months maybe. Uh, if you are uh, like studying regularly, sincerely, five to six hours per day, then two, three months are good enough for you. If you are going to study only uh, four weeks, then you are going to study like 15 to 18 hours per day. Then you can finish the thing in four weeks. The books are not too much. The books I will going to I'm going to tell you. Uh, for internal medicine, there are two books: Fall Book Internal Medicine and Inner Medicine in a Frag on Antwort. So Fall Book Inner Medicine, that is a case book. There, is, there are 50, uh, 150 cases of internal medicine, and uh, there is a like clinical picture given. Okay, how, and then there is a probable questions and there are answers for that. And I find uh, like my personal recommendation is fall book should be covered first because uh, fall book they have mentioned everything very stepwise. That what is uh, what are you going to do? Okay, this is thing. What are you going to do now? This is the thing. What are you going to do in Fragun Antwoord? That is another medicine in Fragun Antwoord. Things are very diffuse. They have talked about concepts and theories, but then. Uh, it's as it is not in a very sequential manner then it is very difficult for us to memorize that and analyze that and re we have to remember that because these books are for us in foreign language they are in german so for us it is more difficult for foreign language speakers it is more difficult to read everything retain everything and also reproduce everything that is most important because in theory exam in oral exam you are going to have to uh, speak out what you know. You might know a lot, but if you are not going to speak out, if you are not going to talk to them, they are not going to know that you that you know. And then you, it's difficult to pass in that situation. So uh, you need to know everything in a flowchart manner. Okay, this happens now. This this happens now. This and that is given in uh, fall book in our medicine. Same goes for surgery as well. So fall book is my first recommendation. And uh, Chirurgy in Fragun Antwort is second recommendation. If you do all four books, well and good. If not, then fall book has to be done first. And also not once, twice and thrice. Till the time you know it page by page and sentence by sentence. So and uh, you don't have to go into details fall book has sometimes gone into too much details talking about doses and everything but that much if you skip that is okay but baseline that the sequence of the events and the sequence of management that has to be memorized from fall book general med in internal medicine and surgery so those are the two things and the things which are there in fall book are also there in Fragon and antwort and vice versa so the content is not very separate so even if you do only one of each that is also fine. You don't have to do all four. If you do well and good, if you don't have time, you can do only two of books, fall book inner medicine, fall book chirurgy, because the content is the same. In fact, fall book has more content. Then for pharmacology, you might do last minute pharmacology. Uh, I have personally not done it because I, I did not have that much time. Uh, but people who other people recommend that last minute pharmacology is a good book for pharmacology and should be done. Going ahead, uh, there is a website called Ambos. You can Google it. I have also given the shown you the link. Uh, I mean, you cannot click on it because it's going to be a video. But uh, I, I will give it in a description. Uh, so you click on that uh, link and you register for that website. And it's going to cost you five euros per month. And uh, but all the information for Ambos, I found it very like excellent combination for an MBBS student. In German and most of the MBBS students in Germany use this website for their daily uh, learning. You also have an app for this because most of the information what you read in Fallbook and uh, Fragon Antwort is given over there. And in this Ambos, uh, there are these uh, radiological pictures, CT scan, MRT, ECG, everything is there. I studied all my entire ECG from Ambos and I did pretty well. I, I could. Uh, uh, analyze ECG after learning from this. Also, X-rays and uh, CTs, as I told you, when you talk about, say, cholecystitis, then they will, uh, and, and first of all, describe entire thing about cholecystitis and then they will show you. 
the how the gallbladder looks and say gallbladder uh, cancer or say pancreas cancer they will show you in ct scan how that will look they will show you in ercp how that will look so that is a very good website recommendable website and costs doesn't cost too much 5 euro per month is i find reasonable that is the most important thing and that is the most important for preparation but the most important thing overall to clear the exam is i find uh, experience in a german hospital either working or observing because uh, the examination is to uh, know that will you be able to work alone individually in a german hospital setting that is the thing so if you are acquainted with the german hospital and you know how things work over there that is going to be a huge benefit for you because examination is going to be the questions are going to be like that okay patient com comes like this and this like this what will you do so the, that thing may be universal but in a german hospital will you phone somebody will you telephone somebody uh, what are you will you, what will you do will you bring the sister so or the uh, the nurse i mean so the exam is clinical oriented and in theoretical details they don't go very much if you if they go in theoretical detail that means you are doing pretty well so don't be uh, anxious about that so this is uh, i have tried to cover the overview of this exam uh, in short i hope this helps uh, thank you very much for watching the video keep continue watching and please like subscribe to the channel so that i can make more videos and reach out to you thank you very much again bye bye